All right. Other than that, uh, I think I think that's all from my end as far as the housekeeping. Thank you all for being here. And uh, Brock, take it away. Looking forward to hearing from you. All right. Excellent. Well, this this class is a, I really enjoy this class. It's a short class. We try to do actually with the pandemic, we really started shifting away from day long classes to kind of short 20 minute, or, I'm sorry, two hour classes, not 20 minutes. Uh, we haven't gotten them down that tight yet. But um, yeah, just recognizing that we can't do everything in two hours that we could do in eight hours or more, but we can get the basics down and give people enough information to really get going without having to give up an entire day. So that's that's really kind of where this this class came out of. In fact, the, the origins of it go back to uh, some of the, the folks over in the law school wanting to just do a short session on feedback. And it it's grown a little bit since then we've added to it. And uh, if you can, either in, in your camera or just with one of the icons, let me just ask you, who loves getting feedback? I mean, you know, just kind of, kind of raise your hand there. Like when someone comes up and says, hey, I've got some feedback to give you, you get excited about it. All right, I, I see a few hands going up. All right, good on you for that. Uh, because. Let me ask this, for those who didn't raise your hands right in that one, and so Denise, Caleb, thank you for, for jumping in there. Let me ask this, even if you don't like really getting feedback or you feel your guts kind of tighten up when someone says, hey, can I give you some feedback? Who here, again, show of hands, wants to know when you're on or off track, wants to find great ideas for doing your job even better, and you want to be known for doing great work? I mean, show of hands there. Yeah, they go up a lot quicker that, that, that time. and. You know, and that's the paradox, right? That most of us, even those of us who like getting feedback or like the benefits of feedback, don't always really enjoy receiving it. But we all do want the benefits. We all do want to do great work. And so, you know, so often we tend to think about feedback as like this negative and kind of a one time event, like out of the blue, someone comes out and gives us feedback and then it's done. And today we're really going to be talking about giving, giving and receiving feedback really much more as a routine part of work. Like just as a part of the day, it's not weird if someone gives you feedback or you give someone feedback. And my caveat to this is this is not a quick fix. It is a long-term process. No one here is going to be an expert in the next 90 minutes, two hours. Uh, feedback will still be difficult sometimes. There is no perfect feedback. I mean, it involves other humans. And so that can be difficult, complicated, or just weird and awkward sometimes. But there are some things that we can make it easier to do, make it better to do, and make it feel a little more natural. And so we're going to be talking about giving feedback, including a feedback model, seeking and receiving feedback, uh, and also creating it uh, more of a culture, bringing it into the environment, um, no matter what, what our position is, no matter what our area is. And so real quick question for everyone, uh, you can type it in the chat if you want, or if you want to just turn your mic on and talk a lot of times that's easier, but I'd love to hear from most folks. What are you really hoping to get from today? Like what inspired you? What are you really hoping to take away from a class on feedback? And th this is the part where other people talk. Hi, Hi this is Flora. Um, hey, I, Flora. I think for me, I, I'm a postdoc at the School of Social Work, um, and I'm also an instructor. And so I'm mindful of the way I give feedback, but I know that with when it comes to my research, um, for me, it might, what I hope to take away is <clears throat> how to ask for feedback. I know that everyone has the unique style of providing feedback, but um, in essence, some of us may not necessarily fully benefit um, from it, whether written or verbal. So I guess just you know, being more constructive in how we seek it um, right. if we're not really getting what, what we hope to you know, receive. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Laura, for jump, jumping in there. And it looked like we had a couple come up in the, in the comments, understand the different culture of feedback. Um, uh, do's and don'ts of constructive feedback towards both mentors and mentees. Okay, we'll definitely get into into that a little bit. Um, the the model we'll be talking about. So, uh, uh, 
Sifan, are you talking about different cultures of feedback? Won't go much into feedback across different cultures, if, if I'm interpreting that, that correctly. We'll give a model that is sim simple enough that everyone should be able to adopt it kind of into their situation, depending on who, who they're talking to. Um, and so with that, let's jump into it here. I'm gonna show uh, a short video. Um, oh, great, Caleb. How to respectfully give feedback, encourage others not to be afraid to be open with, with you. Want students to be comfortable addressing problems, uh, for example, in your research group, eventually, hopefully. All right, excellent. Yeah, that's a tough one. Feedback's always hard and it's hard to receive and sometimes it's really hard to give. The person giving the feedback is actually in a really vulnerable position and we don't often think about it that way, especially if there's any kind of power dynamic, like student to, to faculty member. Um, so, so we'll talk a little, a little bit about that. And I, I have a video here. This is meant to be ridiculous. It's meant to be silly. It's meant to be over the top. So, um, and is actually an, an ad for the Crucial Conversations course, which, which we do offer here. And I think we're trying to figure out how we can maybe open up to some postdocs and make it work there as well. But it is just around the idea that giving bad news can be awkward and difficult. And as you watch it, you may recognize yourself in this, either feeling like the person trying to give the feedback or how the person receiving the feedback might feel. It is, like I say, just meant to be kind of over the top silly as we, we get started with the class today. So hopefully the technology works and the audio will come through. Blake, let me know if it doesn't. Hey, how's it going, man? So I'm supposed to tell you that you're not on the planning committee anymore and it's probably because your ideas suck. Oops. <laughs> Your ideas are not what we would call good, useful, having any value at all. I, I think they're great, but everybody else thinks they're terrible. You have ideas only a mother could love, your mother. No, it's not that your ideas are bad. Can I text it? Yeah, yeah, I'll just, um, I'll text it to you. But just be sure not to read this until like after work or until like you get home after some good news. I'm sorry no one thinks you're fun. You know, I think it's really admirable that you would continue to say such bad ideas out loud in the face of so much justifiable opposition. It's so inspiring. Good talk, I, I feel so much better. Is that a new keyboard? No? All right. Yes. So that is meant to be ridiculous. And I, I can relate to that, though. I mean, it, it trying to help others be better, trying to be better ourselves can be that weird, awkward. How, how do you express in a way where it's going to be well received? Um, so first thing let's talk about is uh, and by the way, hopefully the, the video has everyone inspired to do a little bit better at giving feedback than that gentleman did. So um, Let's talk about definition. I like to use definitions just so that we're all on the same page when we talk about some of the bigger concepts. So for, for the purpose of this class, feedback is a dialogue to help people improve by encouraging effective future behavior. And, and so let, let me ask you, if you would, again, you can open the mic and just talk or type it in the comments. For you, what stands out about that definition? Hi, this is Denise. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, so what stands out to me is it specifically says that feedback is a dialogue. It's not, to me, that means it's not just a one-way conversation. It is supposed to go back, both back and forth. All right. Excellent. Yeah, definitely. Um, if it's a monologue, we're probably not giving feedback. We're just giving a lecture. So, yeah. What else? For, for other folks, what stands out for you? I think for me, the fact that it's that it's intended to help people improve, that that's not always something that comes through uh, in, when feedback is uh, is given. 
Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times it, it can feel more like, you know, they're just venting <laughs> in our direction. Um, or we, we feel bad about the situation, but that doesn't necessarily translate into helping us in the future. And, and so we definitely want that. It's, it's, the focus is, you know, it, it is a dialogue and that's really important that it is a two way conversation and the focus is on helping people improve. And we're also looking at effective future behavior. So it's not really about today. We can't fix the past and it's not really about today, but it's what are we going to do in the future that's different that will help us be even better. And so when we think about feedback for, through this lens, it, it changes things a lot. How, like how we normally think about feedback often doesn't fall into this definition. It is a lecture. It is just kind of a verbal attack and it all gets lumped under this. Oh, I just gave you some feedback, uh, but not really, not really. And so when we think about asking for it, receiving it, this is really what we're looking for. And, you know, the, the best feedback out there holds people accountable to a higher standard while making them want to achieve it. So nothing about this definition is, you know, we're letting people off the hook, we're letting standards slide, nothing like that. But it's how do we do it in a way that, that really inspires that person to be more effective in the future. And broadly speaking, there are probably three types of feedback. Uh, there, there may be more, but these are the big ones that come up in my mind. There, there is the encouragement. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing awesome. Great. There's a suggestion. Hey, here's some things I think you could do that might help you be even better in the future. Here's some things where I think you're kind of getting your own way. You might want to try something different. And then there's the correction, the, the must do. And, and that is really much more in the realm of, you know, the, the supervisor and the employee, the manager and their direct report, um, the person overseeing the, the work. And number two and number three, suggestion and correction are, are different. And I think they benefit from different approaches and problems arise when we tend to approach them the same way. And, you know, we're either not clear that this is a must correct or it is just a suggestion, but it comes across as you have to change everything. And, and, and so we're, we're going to talk a little bit about that. But and I, I do want to be really clear here. So if if the other person has violated a rule, a policy, a regulation, or a law to the point where we're talking about they need to be written up, I mean, I guess that's technically feedback, but it's a very different conversation than what we're talking about here. And so, you know, if you if you happen to supervise others, happen to supervise students, whatever it is, and that's what you're facing, that's great. HR is happy to help out with those conversations, but that's not really our focus for today. We're really just looking more at the helping the other person improve, assuming they're within, within normal boundaries. Um, so two questions for you. And first question, I'm just going to ask you just to jot down some quick bullet points for yourself, and then, then we'll talk about it. But the first question from your perspective, what are the costs, what are the downsides of being in a work environment where people don't give or receive performance-related feedback? You know, like from your own example experience, if you don't receive feedback, what's the cost to that? If you're not giving feedback to those around you, what are some of the potential costs? Give you just a, a few minutes to, to jot, jot some notes down. All right, as you finish up some of those thoughts, what are some of the costs that you identified? If you would go ahead and just, just unmute your mic and, and throw it out there. The most obvious thing I think is it's uh, it's a major avenue to just really erroneous thinking. 
uh, in, in the sciences, that's how we hone in on better answers is through constructive critique that can be given by other folks with that think differently than than we do or have access to different information than we do. All right. Yeah. And so super important there. And I mean, I think we can probably extrapolate that out. You know, if we're not finding ways to get better, chances are we're not going to get better or we're going to, you know, continue with that erroneous thinking or down that wrong path, whatever it is. Um, thank you, Caleb, for, for jumping in there. What, what, are, what were some of their answers people wrote down? I wrote that it could, um, it may leave you to assume that you're doing a task correctly and maybe you aren't. So uh, it can leave you blindsided to being fired or replaced on a task because you aren't receiving any feedback that you're approaching the task in the improper way. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. And you know, what I find is when we're really off path, people will generally correct us. It's when we're kind of off path that they will just kind of let us continue going down kind of a, off path and and we don't know about it and it can keep building and we keep getting further off path until someday someone does have to have that conversation and we are blindsided because we didn't hear difference so we assumed we were going down the right track yeah one one more How about you, Blake? What's one that you had? Uh, I kind of went the other direction from what Janice said. I thought that a person could get the idea that there's some reason why they're not getting feedback, that uh, maybe I'm not doing a good enough job and that's why I'm not hearing anything about my uh, about my performance. Oh, Almost yeah. a paranoia. Okay, yeah. And that, that's a great one too. Um, a lot of, especially if we're taking on a new task or a new role, and we want to know how we're doing and we don't have enough experience or enough perspective to figure it out. Um, yeah, <laughs> that can be a pretty nerve wracking place. Um, and we may be fully on the right track in that case and just, and that's why we're not getting it. Or we may think like, no one just wants to tell me that I'm way off and I'm doing so bad. It's not even worth the conversation or, you know, like you say, paranoia, you know, <laughs> we can kind of, our brains can run away there. And, um, let me, let me ask this. So, you know, kind of definite flip side of that. What are the benefits of having an environment? And, and I guess, you know, even without asking, we've, we've already kind of answered that if we just reverse it. Like, we know where we stand. Um, we, we're not heading down the wrong path because we're receiving that feedback. Um, we know that if we are erroneous in our thinking or we are off course that people will give us the guidance to to be able to get back on path get back on course so we don't have to have that that wondering um you know because no one wants to fail from my experience no one wants to be off course we all want to be on course and, and doing it well you know uh, a mentor and a former boss of mine he was an entrepreneur who really had for a while made a career out of buying and turning around businesses that used to be successful and were now failing. And the way he did this is largely through creating a feedback culture to identify the changes. I mean, he knew that the people working there probably knew best on what was going well and what wasn't going well. And so he brought that approach to the business he had when I knew him. And he, he once told me that in that business, you know, we were successful five years ago, but if we were still operating that way, we'd be out of business today. And we're successful today, but we'll be out of business in five years if we're still operating this way. And that, that always stuck with me, the idea that even when you're doing a good job, you probably still need to be finding ways to do a better job because the world's going to change and we need to keep up with it. And we can't do that if we're not getting good feedback. So we know it's important, we know there's downsides and yet there's still a need for a class like this. And so the, you know, the big question is like, what gets in the way of giving feedback? Why don't we do it? Why don't we seek it if we know that it's so valuable? And so uh, a couple of things, and this is not a completely exhaustive list here, but a couple of the big things that stand out is sometimes it's seen as something only leadership does. You know, the 
whether it's the, the supervisor, the manager, or just you know working on a project, the most experienced, the, the senior most person on the project. And if we take that view, then it feels weird to be the only one who's giving feedback who's not in, in a leadership role. And so we just don't. Um, another thing is it feels risky to give feedback. It, it, it's weird to think about, but actually when we give feedback, we become very, very vulnerable. And there, there's a, a couple of reasons. One, it, we already talked about a little bit, just the power differential. So um, I, I've experienced that trying to give feedback to my manager. I know people who reported to me, even though like several of you who raised your hands, very open to feedback, very welcoming of feedback. I know I need feedback. It's still risky. It's still a challenge to kind of raise your hand to someone who's more experienced, more senior. Um, you know, Caleb, you'd mentioned students being comfortable addressing issues. I mean, that feels, even though we can all talk about the benefits, it just still feels risky. And apologies for my dog barking in the background there, uh, if you can hear him. The, the other thing that feels risky are just simply relationships and interpersonal dynamics. You know, it's vulnerable putting something out there because if I go to say, if I go, go, to, go to Blake with, hey, I've got some feedback for you, Blake, I might be worried like, what if he takes it badly? Like, what if that hurts our, our working relationship? I, we still have to work together. We still have to get stuff done. Is this going to interfere with that in the future? You know, the answer is probably no, but we still have that worry, right? We, we still still wonder when we're, we're about to go talk to the other person. And, and frankly, feedback from my experience on both ends of feedback is not always given or received well. And... There are several factors in that. There's different personalities. We all have different hot buttons. Um, you know, for, for example, we may have you know 99 things out there that we're just totally fine with. Tell us whatever you want about it, but there's that 100th subject, that the one that just winds us up. And we've all got them. And we never, none of us want to step on someone else's hot button, right? So we're always wary of that. And some people, I mentioned personalities, some people are very open to feedback and very good at receiving feedback. Some people value it, but in the moment, it doesn't always feel that way. You know, they're taking it in, they're processing it, but it doesn't look like they're real happy about it. And so, you know, just the, the different styles that we have can make it difficult. And sometimes feedback ends up feeling like me versus you versus us in it together. You know, the, the example that was given around the, the maths and science, sciences uh, we improve by other people throwing ideas in. Yeah, as us together, that's how we get better. But if it ends up feeling like me pushing you down, even if that wasn't our intention, that gets in the way of giving or receiving feedback well. Um, there's also, you know, I don't know if any, anyone's familiar with Brene Brown, but, you know, she's done a lot of research on on vulnerability. And she had commented that, in nice cultures, you know, quote unquote, nice cultures, we don't talk to people, we talk about them. You know, we, we don't confront them, we just we go talk to our coworker about them and try and resolve it that way, as though that's going to resolve it. You know, we talk to everyone but the person who can do something about it. Um, and I don't know if you've experienced that. I, I've certainly seen that in action. We want to be nice. We don't want to upset the other person, so we don't give them the feedback. And that gets in the way that gets in the way. So I will say there isn't a one size fits all solution. There are things that we can do to improve it for most people in most situations. And I guarantee you, we've all seen them in action over the years. So what I share with you today probably won't be anything earth shakingly new. You'll have experienced it, you'll have done it. It might just be a framework to help do it more consistently, uh, especially in the moment. And so uh, let me pause there before we go any further. What questions do you have for me? before I get into sharing the model or anything, but in, anything I haven't covered that you have questions about. All right, I'll take that as a no. It's all going well, excellent. Uh, but do jump in if you do have questions. So, uh, you know, let's talk about providing feedback. So the best time to give feedback, 
I, I love the, this definition. It actually comes from an entrepreneur by the name of Raphael Crawford Marx. And he says that the best time to give feedback is at the earliest opportunity when you can do it in private without heightened emotions. And, and so let me ask, and again, just op open your mics up and, and jump in. What stands out for you about that definition? This is Flora. <clears throat> With this um, earlier, um, uh, you were, Brock, you were talking about um, vulnerability and having a, a kind of a, a space to receive feedback. And um, for me, I think it's also like that culture of trust, right? Um, kind of go, goes hand in hand with the culture of, of feedback. So for me, what stands out um, is the um, earliest opportunity. I think I'm um, being mindful and understanding people's work, um, but at the same time, with those three elements of, um, for me, enthusiasm, I think I, I get excited about my work. So if there's some affirmation, it helps, right? right? But um, when it's accompanied with, with that kind of reaction along with um, the constructive feed, feedback without the heightened emotions in the sense that it's not so much a way of like correcting your work, right? Because we're all in a very vulnerable spots, but also um, understanding the work and giving um, perspective as a way to enrich, you know, um, your work. But also if the work is not, <laughs> definitely not up to expectations, being honest about that too. But I think that's also that personal accountability of what we bring to the table. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, yeah, so so we've got quite a bit going on here. I mean, obviously, so does this share with you the one right time? No, because there's several factors happening. Like there's not one perfect moment that, you know, 23 minutes after an event happens, you should get feedback. Like that just doesn't exist. Uh, we know that earlier is better than later. If you tell me six months later, I can't do anything with that feedback. Like that moment's gone. I probably don't even remember it. And yet we also know that you know, in an ideal world, real time right then feedback is great, except there's often other people around. It may be a situation where, you know, the person giving feedback's upset, so they're not in the best state to give feedback, or the person receiving it's upset, they're not in the best state, or it's just a busy day. It's just like not the time to give feedback or something emotional happened, you know, so something big is going on, there's concern, there's worry, What whatever. Um, that earliest opportunity isn't always the best moment when we factor in those other things. But but I will tell you that the guidance that was given to me is, you know, sooner is better. Anything beyond a week probably is no longer relevant. So within that first couple of days, so, you know, once we can be in the right state of mind to give it, once we know they're in the right state of mind to receive it, we can do it in private if it's constructive. Um, and we can we can do it in a way where we can be objective about it, because really we are just trying to help them improve for the future, right? That that was going back to that original definition, is having a dialogue with them to encourage them the effective future behavior. So let's talk about a simple feedback model to help us give that. Now, I will tell you, I have very much love-hate relationship with simple models. Uh, I love them because they they break it down. They make the complex easy to understand. They they give me a starting place. What I don't like about them is the world is rarely a simple place. If it were, we probably wouldn't even need the model. Like we just go handle it. And, and so, you know, this is a in a very simple simple model that we've got to apply to in real life. So I'll share the model, and then I'll also share some additional ideas for when the world isn't quite that simple. But the first thing we do when we're giving feedback to someone else is ask if we can give them feedback. That may sound a little weird. Why, why would we start there? Why would we ask them if we can give them feedback? And again, just go ahead and open up your mic and, and jump in with a response. You mean immediately give somebody else a sense of control and a, a piece of being in part of a dialogue rather than being told what to do. Yeah, that is 
That's definitely it. And, and, and you hit on kind of one of those pieces there of it helps them feel in control. Like they have <laughs> some say in this. And there's there's a little bit of weird human psychology in there where by them saying yes and telling us we can give them agreeing for us to give them feedback, it's almost like they give themselves permission to hear the feedback as well. Um, and I only mention that through personal experience, you know, th those who are actual psychologists probably have more technical terms around that, but it just seems like that when it's like, okay, yeah, go ahead and give me the feedback. I know when I've said that to people that it's like, okay, I'm ready to hear it. You know, I, I'm, I'm in that state. And so, yeah, they've got more control and we are able to then start having a dialogue. And remember, this is a dialogue. So we've already initiated that dialogue. They're feeding into the conversation just by answering that question as well. Now, it says as appropriate. So I do want to give a, a couple of caveats to that. I mean, um, and first off, oh, and another reason is just it might be bad timing. All the psychology aside, it may just not be a good time for them to get feedback. And, and so in which case it may be more along the lines of, you know, when would be a good time to get feedback. Uh, but but the caveats that go with that is if you are in a, a supervisory position, you may be in a place where, where you would be remiss if you did not give performance feedback. And, and so it's not really they get to choose to get it or not. It's more of they get to choose when, <laughs> you know, hey, I need to give you some feedback on, on your performance. Is now a good time or should we schedule another time later this week? That's more of what it would sound like. Um, the other thing in the caveat there is if we ask them, and it's not like the supervisory position where we, we have to give feedback, but if we ask if we can give feedback and they say no, well, we need to honor that. We can't, we can't say, hey, Denise, can I give you some feedback? And Denise says, uh, I don't think so, Brock, and go, oh, okay, well, I was just going to tell you that, you know, no, we can't do that. Like, we, we've got to honor what we asked. And, and so um, I will say that even if someone says no, it's usually about timing and curiosity often gets the better of them. And, and they, they, you know, they'll get in a different headspace and come back with a yes. I, I've almost never had anyone say no other than just no in that moment. And so, but we do want to start engaging the dialogue there around asking, can we give them feedback? Um, and then here's the heart of it. State the behavior and the impact. Now, very, very important that this is the behavior that we have observed. It's not about the person. It's not a judgment. It's not an interpretation. You know, people resist feedback when they see it as a personal attack. And so by keeping it about the behavior, we're able to hold them accountable without shame, without blame. We're not tearing them down. We're helping them be better. And it's not about reliving the past. It's really about improving the future. So we're just saying what we saw. And the impact of that behavior. So, you know, when we, when we were in that meeting and you did this, well, here was how I saw that affect other people. Here's the impact of you talking over someone or, you know, what, whatever it is, the feedback that we're, we're giving them. Uh, so they understand just it's, it's not about them. It's about the behavior. And what is the impact? Because that's often what we miss. I mean, sure, I spoke over that person, but we don't see the impact behind it or whatever the, the, you know, the behavior was. And so this helps really clarify, here's what I saw, and here's how I saw that affect me, here's how I saw that affect others. And then share effective future behavior. Um, Marshall Goldsmith, who is a pretty well-known executive coach, he calls this feed forward, which, you know, rather than feedback, it's feed forward, it's focused on the future. So. It is, um, rather than rehashing the unchangeable past or telling them what not to do, we're sharing with them what we would want them to do in the future. Because if I tell you what not to do, that doesn't mean you automatically know what you should do. And so much easier and it short, shortcuts the whole conversation if we're just able to tell them the behavior that we would like to see or the behavior that we feel like would be really effective for them. You know, so rather than doing, you know, so, hey, can I give you some feedback when you did this? Here's the impact that, that I saw from that. And so I would recommend that you do this in the future. 
you'll use better words, you'll have actual situations, but that's kind of what the framework would sound like. And then close with commitment. Here's a place that we often fail when giving feedback. We have the whole conversation and then we walk away and we're feeling good and then no one knows what they agreed to do or by when they would agree, they agreed to do it. So this piece is really getting their agreement on next steps or next actions. And in a really complex situation, that could be as simple as our commitment is, hey, go home tonight, think about it, mull it over, come back tomorrow, we'll have a deeper conversation about it. You know, that could be that level of commitment for now. Oh, and by the way, this model works for giving praise as well. Like, hey, can I give you some feedback? Yeah, great. Well, when you did this, this happened. I thought it was amazing. Please keep doing that in the future. And of course, they're going to commit to that. So, you know, it's, but all this works both ways. We Humans just work better when we understand, you know, our behavior, our impact, and more effective behavior for the future. And then another place that we often fall down, we go through a whole model, we give all the feedback, they receive it, we get commitment, and then we never follow up with them. What message does that send to them or what's the potential message if we're not reinforcing when they're making, when there's evidence of progress? And that's not a rhetorical question. Go ahead and open up your mic, someone jump in with an answer there. It makes it seem like the feedback wasn't that important. Yeah, yeah, it, it really does, uh, you know, because, well, if it were important, you would have noticed. And, you know, as someone receiving feedback, if I've got two ways to do things, one was the way I was comfortable doing it, two is the way that you just told me to do it, and it doesn't seem to matter to you, well, I'm gonna go back to the way that I'm comfortable doing it. Um, so yeah, this is, or we feel uncertain, like we're trying something new. It's not how we typically behave. And if we don't know, you know, kind of, as was mentioned earlier, we're less likely to, to do it. We're less likely to follow up with it. So after we get commitment, watching for and really being able to tell them, Hey, I see you're making progress. Here's what I see you're doing. That's, that's better. Or even just reinforce that you're seeing that they're trying. You, you know, we don't have to wait until they, they win the world, right? We, we can just notice that they're, they're actually trying on getting better. And it's really this lack of follow-up that kills most of the benefits from feedback. So I want to stop right there and just ask for, for you, for all of you, what do you like about this model? What I like about it, this is for, um, I, I, I love the, I think the last one is they're all important, but if we're talking about consistency and feedback and really being committed to building a culture of feedback, um, I feel like the more we practice this, um, whether it's in your office with your supervisor, um, okay. you have a stronger um, environment you're, you're building for that culture of feedback. I also like that going into this model requires you as the person giving feedback to think about it because you have to have an understanding of exactly what the behavior and what the impact was that you're giving feedback to before you approach the person to give them feedback. So it requires you to be conscious in the moment that you're giving feedback. Oh, nice. Yeah, wouldn't feedback get so much better if it wasn't just kind of the, the knee-jerk feedback of what <laughs> what comes out of our brains unfiltered in the moment, but actually just went through this to get conscious about what we're doing? Yeah, that, that's a great point. Uh, other things, other takeaways or things that people like about this model? Oh, Caleb, it's cyclic. It's not a one-time event. Yes, thank you for, for noticing that. The, the, this is ongoing, right? We're we're giving feedback, we're helping them, we're getting commitment, and then we're coming back and reinforcing and we're giving more feedback as we're reinforcing and providing evidence of that. And so this, this does just keep cycling through that way. Yeah, thanks for shout, calling that out, Caleb.
All right, any questions on this model? Like I say, it's a very, very sim simple model. All right, in that case, we're gonna jump into when feedback isn't simple. Because like I said, if feedback, whoops, there we go. If feedback were simple, we probably wouldn't need a model to give it. All right, so as we talk about this, I'm gonna share several steps and, and I will say that steps one through three might eliminate the need for feedback entirely, or at least drastically change it. Really what we're looking at is getting curious and asking questions and connecting on a human, le human level. You know, getting on the same side of the table with them so it doesn't feel like us versus them. It feels like we're in it together. And, and so first thing is just accepting that you may not fully understand the issue. Like, is it possible that you don't know something about what's going on? Yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things that we want to do is start with assuming positive intent. Um, I don't know if you've heard that phrase before. It's a very H-R-E phrase. Um, really, it just means giving them the benefit of the doubt. The idea that until we find out otherwise, we're going to assume they had good intentions. They were trying to do well. They were trying to do right. Now, in conversation, we may discover that that's not the case. But think about how that changes the conversation when we start off with, hey, I know you want to be successful and I need to talk to you about this, I, where I think it's getting in your way versus there you go, messing up again. Totally different conversation. And, and so when we can approach it with assuming positive intent, the other thing that does is it keeps us curious versus just coming in with a, a well-defined judgment in our brain of what we think they meant. Um, and, and so by just accepting we may not fully understand the issue, we know chances are they want to be successful at what they're doing. It just changes the dialogue. It changes the tone. And also under that is, is it possible that when we gave them instructions, we made some assumptions about what they understood or we weren't clear? Yes. <laughs> it is entirely possible that they did not understand or we assumed they understood more than, than they did. You know, one of the things that we're always taught is to check and see if people understand. So we ask the question, so do you understand? And I will tell you, I think that is one of the most dangerous questions we can ask. And the, the reason being is that there was only one right answer to that question. No one wants to appear stupid, particularly with someone we respect, with someone more senior than us, with someone who has control over our career. We don't wanna look dumb in front of them. And so not everyone, but what many of us tend to do is just say, yeah, I got it. And then we hurry off and try and figure out what on earth they were talking about and just try and work it out on our own. Or even more dangerous, they say yes, and they truly believe they understand and they run off in the wrong direction at hundred miles an hour. And so other questions are perhaps more helpful. Open-ended questions are around, so what do you understand? What will be your first step? What do you anticipate will be some of the challenges as you do this? Um, how would you explain this project to me now that I've explained it to you? Can you put it in your words? Those sort of questions help us feel out how much they do understand and any places that we may have missed. Next, once we've accepted that maybe there's more to the issue than we understand is to get curious and ask questions. You know, can you tell me about how did you decide to do that? Walk me through the situation. And I will say that these questions can be a little tricky sometimes because it can come off sounding like a judgment. Um, so there is some, some delicacy around it, but just being able to say, hey, I just want to understand more. You know, there might be something I'm missing here. Um, let, let, let's talk about this a little bit. The, the third step to that is just listen, like just stop talking and listen, you know, really listen. Um, so often our listening just means we're just pausing to let them talk while we formulate our thoughts. And in this case, no, actually just stop and take in what they're saying and, and think about it. Um, I want to share an, an example, uh, Rich Sheridan, he is the CEO of Menlo Innovations, which is a, a small software company, but it's a company with an just insanely strong feedback culture. And he, I saw an interview with him once and he, and he shared an example of when he needs to give tough feedback. He says he likes to check in at the human level first and just say, hey, are you okay? 
Is everything okay in your world right now? Now, a couple things to that. If something is wrong, they may not tell you, but that's okay, right? Because we are just being real, we're being human with them, we're giving them that space. And if there is something big that they want to talk about, great, they don't have to talk about it. And if there is and they do want to talk about it, that may change our total perspective on the situation. And then don't assume it's about them. He says, check in about yourself. You know, is there something I've done to upset you? Because, you know, in the example he gave, I noticed there were a few times when we were in a meeting together and you just seemed quieter than normal. And I wondered maybe if I did something. And then he says, you know, move to constructive feedback if you still even need to. And, and the example I, I've seen him share is kind of a silly example, but he just had a VP who was real high level, real top performer. And over the, the previous couple of weeks, just really wasn't performing at the level that they normally did. Just seemed distracted, not really focused on their job, a little checked out, a little disconnected. And, you know, for an average person, we may not notice that. In this person, he really noticed that. And so he got worried that, you know, either one, he needed to have a performance conversation with them, or two, that they no longer liked their job, didn't want to work there, would be looking to go somewhere else. And he really, really valued them. So he, he kind of went through this conversation with them, you know, hey, are you okay? Is everything going great? And you're like, yeah, yeah, life's fine. Why do you ask? So, well, you know, is there anything I've done? Because it just, you just seem disengaged. You seemed a little more checked out than, than normal. And I, I was just wondering if maybe I did something that was, you know, getting in the way of you really enjoying your job. And he said the person thought about it for a minute. And it's like, no, well, you know, so funny thing, I've been shopping around for a new mattress and I haven't found one that works yet. And I just haven't been sleeping well the past few weeks. And and that was it. Like, I, I love that. It's just a, a very silly, very human thing of they just weren't getting a good night's sleep. But if he had just jumped in with, hey, you're, you're checked out, you're not performing well, and jumped in with a lecture, it would have done no one any good. But by coming into it with a conversation, the other person, the VP, thought they were performing okay. You know, they knew they were tired, but they didn't realize they were coming across differently. And this let them have that conversation and, and you know, improve things. Like I say, it, it's kind of a silly example, but there's so many things we need to give feedback on that we build up in our heads that if we just sit down and have a conversation, we'd realize that, oh, yeah, we're just human. We, we can deal with this. And um, before I share that, there is kind of a, it's not really a fourth step, but it is a fourth item. Before I share that, let me ask any questions or any thoughts about kind of these three steps here? All right. Well, the fourth, the fourth thing, and I know it's on here as a number four. It's not really a fourth step. It is just another tool when feedback isn't simple. And it's called the feel felt found approach. And you may have heard of this. You may not have it. I first heard about it reading um, books on sales. It's a sales technique. Um, and, but don't let that bother you. Um, it's actually a very useful technique for giving feedback, and, but it, it comes with some caveats. So I, I do mention it with a lot of cautions. If it's done sincerely, if it's done empathetically with an us together approach, it's really powerful. If it's not sincere, it comes across as a used car salesman and no one likes that. And, and so, but really what we're saying is, and, and again, this assumes that we can authentically say this, you know what? Hey, I understand understand how you feel about that situation. I felt that way myself in the past, but then I found something that changed my mind. So really when you, when you think about it, I mean, you'll, you would put in more <laughs> details there, but it's being able to say, Hey, I understand how you're feeling. Like, it's not weird that you feel that, that way. It's not odd that you have those thoughts. It's a really normal thing. I felt, I thought that way myself in the past. I get that. And then I found some other information that changed my mind. In fact, we can even use this if we just know someone. Like, hey, I used to work with someone who felt that way. And here's what they found. And we can go from there. Now, again, 
if we don't want to come across as telling the other person how they feel because we don't know how they feel, right? Um, and it's very condescending and patronizing if we, if we tell them how they're feeling. But if we're able to say, hey, I think I get what you're feeling here. I think I understand because I was in a similar situation once, and at least this is how I felt about it. Here's the thoughts I had. But here's what I ultimately found out that kind of changed, changed my, my feelings about that. And, and so, like I say, it doesn't work in all situations. If it can't be done authentically, do not even try doing it. But if it can be done authentically, it really puts you both on the same side of the table. Right? It's not you versus them. It's, yeah, I get where you're coming from. I've been there. And here's some additional information that you may not have. Um, let me pause there and just let, let me ask, you know, go ahead and open the mic. What do you like or what stands out for you about that feel found approach? Or if you don't want to open the mic, you can throw it in the chat. That works well too. I definitely see how that can be uh, can come across wrong if it's not done correctly. But I, th I think if it's done well, it uh, it exp expresses to the other person that it that you're not trying to be accusatory or confrontational. Uh, I think it really does uh, put you in a position where you're sharing your experience and you're not telling the other person what to do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I, th I think that uh, that's kind of a, a good summary of it. Um, and, and also, you know, throughout just one other thing, this is just kind of, kind of an aside here. I find the phrase even better to be a nearly magical phrase. Like here's something that I think will help you do, do that even better. Because by saying even better, it assumes they're already doing it well. It's, so it's not about going from bad to good. It's going from, you're already doing that pretty good. And here's some ways to get even better at it. And, and it makes it much easier to both hear the feedback as well as to give it. And again, I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's got to be true. Um, but it's one of those, when we think about the feedback we're giving, we're wanting to help them improve performance in the future. We want to help them be even better. It's a very honest, very authentic phrase. And like I say, it just it just presupposes that we know they're trying, we know they're wanting to do well, and here's a way that they can do it. Not just good, not just better. I even say, hey, here's something that'll help you do better. Mm, okay. Here's something that'll help you do even better. I mean, it just lands differently. It's a very subtle thing, um, but I, I highly recommend using it. It's worked well for me anyway. All right, so that's that's giving feedback. So we've got a model, we've got some thoughts about what to do if it's not simple, or at least how to kind of get human and connect with them while we're giving the feedback. And now let's talk a little bit about seeking and receiving feedback. So we, we, we did the giving, now let's do the seeking. So definition again, it's slightly different. Anyone who's paying really close attention notices, actually there's only like one word difference and it's a dialogue to help you improve by identifying even more effective future behavior. See, we, we work the even more right in the end of that definition even. Um, but it's about you. Seeking feedback is about you, it's not about them. And it helps us identify blind spots and hidden strengths. And blind spots are those Areas where the rest of the world knows that we're struggling and we don't realize that we are. And I'm always really afraid of blind spots. I, I just never want to be doing something where it's not as good as it could be and everyone else around me knows it and hasn't bothered to tell me because they assume I know it too, right? <laughs> like, oh yeah, Brock, we, we thought you knew. Why wouldn't you know that you were getting in your own way doing that? That's a blind spot. Hidden strengths are the opposite. Those are those things that we're really good at that other people acknowledge us to being really good at, and yet we don't see it in ourselves. 
And if we don't see those strengths in ourselves, it's really hard for us to capitalize on them and, and to use them to, to their greatest benefit. Um, I, I know for me and for others, it's easy to think, well, if I'm good at it, there's a lot of people that are good at it. It's not that big of a deal. And if we dismiss our own strengths, if we don't see our own strengths, we're not able to, to really leverage them and bring them out and, and use them, use them fully. And so feedback helps us do both. It helps us spot those things that we should really be aware of to help us improve and help us really appreciate the things that we're already doing great. And so some, some benefits of seeking feedback versus waiting for someone to give us feedback, it's less threatening for everyone involved. If I go to you seeking feedback, you know my intention, it's not worrying, right? It's just, I, I started the conversation, so it's much easier for you to provide me feedback on it. Um, I'm able to get feedback on specific issues. So rather than just waiting for someone to come tell me on what I can improve on, if there's things that I'm actually working on, I'm able to go ask about those and not just have to kind of randomly piece feedback together, but get feedback on the things that are most important to me right now. Uh, the feedback is timely. I know it's timely because I'm asking for it. I get to choose who gives me feedback if I'm seeking it. Now, I can't choose always who gives me feedback. A lot of people are going to give me feedback, but if I'm seeking it, I can choose who gives me feedback about that topic in that moment. And I'm able to ask multiple people. I'm able to get a wide perspective on it. If someone just comes to me with feedback, that's great. I'm only getting one person's perspective. Here, I can get a lot of people's perspectives. It's also seeking feedback is a safe way to get good at receiving feedback. Because we are going to be receiving feedback for the rest of our lives. You know, there, there's no way to avoid that. Not everyone's good at giving it. And it's not always feedback that we want to hear in that moment. But if we practice, this is a skill, and it, this is a way we can get better at receiving feedback. And, and actually, I will mention that um, when we're good at giving feedback or good at receiving feedback, people are much more likely to give us feedback, and so we're more likely to benefit from feedback. If we're not good at receiving feedback, people are less likely to give us feedback, and it just creates this downward spiral. We get less feedback, so we don't improve. So we get worse and we get less feedback and it's just a negative way to go. And so here we can, you know, use it as a way to get continuously better. So some tips around how do we go about seeking feedback? First tip, I don't know if it's the most important, but it's pretty important. Only ask for feedback if you really want it. Yeah, you know, my, my wife and I have a rule and that is, do not ask a question you don't wanna hear the answer to. Because we're committed to being honest, direct, and supportive with each other, and you will get the honest answer, so if you're not really wanting to hear it, don't ask about it. And it works well. Um, so, in the same vein, if you don't really wanna hear the feedback, it's best just not to ask for it. I would also suggest, ask those who are honest, direct, and supportive. And I don't mean you're surrounded with dishonest people. That's not the case. <laughs> I, I like to think we're, we're surrounded by honest people. Everyone we work with, most of the people in our lives are probably pretty honest folk. However, I will tell you, so for example, my mother, one of my favorite people on the planet, wonderful, wonderful woman. If I wanna feel really good about myself, I'll ask her for feedback. She sees me through very rose colored lenses. She will tell me how amazing I am and that's wonderful. Um, I won't necessarily get feedback that will help me improve though. And so if I'm wanting feedback to help me improve, I know I've got to go ask other people in my life. And, you know, we've, we've got those people who we know, uh, will be straight with us. They are able to, you know, love us for our strengths and love us for our faults. And they're able to be direct with us. Those are the people to ask for feedback. Unless you're just wanting to feel better. In which case, you know, go ask my mom. She'll give you great feedback. Um, I think it's good to ask for specific feedback on just one or two things. So if I were to go out there and go, hey, Caleb, how can I improve my life? You know, that's not real helpful for Caleb. That's just dumping a lot in his, in his lap there. But if I'm able to say, hey, I'm working on getting better at this, what are one or two things that you could tell me that you think would help me improve there? 
well, that he could probably work with, right? And so if we can be specific, if we can help guide them, it's also helpful to ask for suggestions, not absolutes. You know, so if I were to say to Denise, hey, Denise, you know, what, what's one thing I could do, do with it will absolutely improve my performance in this category? Uh, absolutes are tough. But if I were able to say, hey, what's one or two things? Yeah, I mean, you have suggestions on just one or two things that might help me get better. Well, that's easier. That kind of pulls the pressure off. It's fairly easy for the other person to give suggestions, but if you're asking them for like the one thing that's going to change your life, that there's some pressure on that. And then, of course, this comes up a lot. Listen to the answers. Actually, listen to what they say uh, and ask questions about it. Because what I find in talking to people is they will generally give you a sufficient answer, but there's more. And, and we often just need to dig a little bit deeper to what they mean behind that, you know, because a lot of times people do the polite thing and just say, yeah, no, you're doing great. Keep it up. Good to hear. Not real helpful. And so great. I'm doing great. What are some specific things that I'm doing great at? Or, yeah, I, I know I'm doing pretty good at it, but I'd really like to get better at all of it. Are there one or two tips maybe you could give me that would help me get better at this? Asking those questions helps us dig below the surface. All right, so before we move forward, I'm gonna ask you just real quick, if you would, just type in the in the comments here, uh, what do you like about these tips? Or what stands out for you from these tips? Like, is there one or two that you just go, oh yeah, that's the one that's gonna work for me? All right, asking for specific feedback on one or two things, great. Thank you, Denise. Um, yeah, uh, so Blake, yeah, this this works for everyone. Like whether it's it's our supervisors or the senior person we're getting feedback from or those we're supervising. This really, and in fact, I, this probably even works even better for those that we're supervising to help give them some context and some focus around it. Um, all right, Caleb, finding those who are honest is important, but difficult to know when you're getting the most effective, honest feedback. Yeah, um, it, it can be. Like I say, people will often give polite answers. And so digging in with questions a little bit, helping them narrow in on the, the things that you want, asking more than one person can help balance all that out. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, only ask for feedback if you really want it. Yeah, um, definitely. We often think we should, so we go do it and then we get mad because they actually gave us feedback. And so um, we, we got to be in the right state of mind for it. So, um, all right, well, let's, in fact, building on that one, on asking for feedback, if you really want it, let's talk about receiving feedback well, even if you disagree with it or you didn't ask for it, because that will show up in our lives, right? People will give us feedback we didn't ask for, and people will give us feedback we disagree with. But as I mentioned, those who are defensive and difficult to give feedback to tend to get less feedback. Those who are receptive to feedback tend to get more feedback. And so there's some things we can do, even when we don't like the feedback or even if we disagree with it, to help us receive it well. And so one of those things is just saying thank you. So let me ask, and if you go ahead and just open up a mic and, and give a response, but if you're receiving feedback you didn't ask for and you don't like, why would you say thank you? What's the benefit to that? Um, I think to reduce the escalation or disagreement. 
Yeah, it does a great job of that, doesn't it? Like, if if you went, imagine you were bad at giving feedback, and we we went to them and just kind of started attacking them, and they respond with, "Hey, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to give me feedback." That's a little disarming. Like, that's hard to escalate from there, and it it, it does de-escalate things a, a bit. And for those that aren't attacking us, and, and and by the way, I don't mean to imply you should stand around and let someone be verbally abusive to you. That's not it. But some people are bad at giving feedback and it comes across poorly. Or they do it in the, mo- in the moment when they're kind of emotional about it. And e- even so, we can say, hey, thanks. I appreciate the feedback. Uh, one, like I say, it, it, it diffuses the situation a bit. Two, whether they mean to or not, they're helping us. They're giving us information that we can use. And three, um, for most people, giving feedback is hard. They're being vulnerable. I mean, we were talking before about students giving feedback to us or giving feedback to your manager or even just giving feedback to a peer. That's hard. You're in a vulnerable position. Um, And just respecting that, you know, it may not have been easy for them to come forward and give us that feedback and and just thank them for it. Um, you know, they're, they're taking a risk and they're helping you improve. So we can be appreciative for that. Now, again, I'm not saying stay in a verbally abusive situation. Please don't do that. But um, in terms of giving feedback we didn't ask for and or we disagree with, uh, remember, you don't have to agree. It is just their opinion. Now, if, you know, it is your manager, it behooves you to at least listen. If it's your spouse, it behooves you to listen, <laughs> you know. Um, we do, but we don't have to agree. Instead, ask questions. Rather than just refuting them and telling them why they're wrong, shift from saying, hey, that's wrong, to, well, tell me more about that. H- help me understand your perspective better. And again, that's also very disarming. And it may help us get some information where it was a blind spot. We just didn't realize how we were coming across or that we were doing something incorrectly. And seek additional perspectives. Like that is just their opinion, great. So we can use that, we can go to other people and say, hey, I received this feedback, I'm not sure I agree with it, but I am curious, I do wanna know more. Let me get your take on that. And we can get more perspectives. Now, this doesn't mean going to a close friend of yours and saying, you won't believe what this crazy person told me. They are so wrong, aren't they? Yeah, that's not what we're talking about here. (laughs) Um, We're just looking for additional perspectives. And then consider how you can use the feedback. Now, there are a lot of people in the world that you can give them feedback. It can be 99% right. They will look at the 1% that's wrong and use that to refute all the feedback they've just received. Yeah, don't be that person. Um, Instead, look for the kernel of truth. They could be wrong on 98% of it, but is there anything in there that might be true? that you might be able to use, that you might be able to think about and and build off of. So whether they're fully right, whether they're fully wrong, there may be something in there that can be helpful for us. And I encourage people to experiment with doing things differently, right? Just because someone gave us feedback, that doesn't mean we have to make a one-time change to our entire lives. We can experiment. We can take that feedback and go try it out, see how it works. And then follow up on the feedback. Go back to the other person, let them know what you did, how you use their feedback, the results that you got from it. And, you know, as appropriate, but letting people know what you tried and how it worked. There's research that shows that nearly everyone who follows up on feedback is perceived as trying to change and improve. Right. And that, that just makes sense. Like if you give feedback to someone and they come back and say, hey, here's how I used it. Here's what I found. Well, we're probably going to re- regard them as someone who cares about getting better. Um, they took feedback. They tried to use that. So following up. And again, this also ties into to the thank you piece. It's just letting them know that we heard them. We listened. We tried it out. Whether we continue with it or not in the future, I don't know, but we're at least letting them know what we did. 
All right, so that's really the last slide on seeking and, and receiving feedback. So so again, let, let me pause at the end of this slide and we just kind of kind of love to know, go ahead, type in the comments. Um, for you, what resonates most about, about these? Okay, yeah, Caleb, uh, dialogue, keeping it a, a two-way conversation, yeah. Okay, de-escalating potentially tense conversations. Yeah, feedback is hard. Like whether you're giving or receiving it, it it can, it can be difficult. Giving re feedback can be really hard because often if we're not comfortable giving feedback, by the time we're ready to give it, it's built up into this huge thing in our heads, right? Um, and, and that's hard. And then we give it, and if they don't respond well, it becomes a really tense situation. And, and so, yeah, we're approaching it as a way that we are on the same page. We want to help them improve. Um, we're curious. It's not that our way is the one right and only perspective, but it is something that we, we feel will help them. And so we share that. And so that there are some benefits there and we can de-escalate things and, and specifically the receiving feedback. Well, yes, on several of these things, if someone is angry or giving hard feedback or they're feeling awkward about it, all this kind of helps defuse it a little bit. It may still be weird and awkward because, again, we're humans dealing with humans, but um, it does help out there. All right. So let's talk about creating a feedback culture. And this is, you know, kind of that that culture, that, that work environment where it's not weird to give and receive feedback. Like it becomes just a normal part of it where it doesn't have to be a big thing or a big deal. And so there's several things that, that we can do. Uh, the first is, you know, as you go back to your teams or go back to, to those around you, letting them know why you feel a feedback culture is important. Being able to just share with them like, hey, I, I would love it if it were just a normal thing where I was able to give you feedback and all of you were able to give me feedback. And here's why. Here's why I think that's important. And then that gives them context. You know, the... It's not just you coming back and saying, hey, I went to this class and I, I think all of you need to start giving me feedback because I'm about to start giving you a lot of feedback. You know, yeah, don't, don't do that, right? But being able to say, hey, here's why it's important. Here's why I want to start building that direction um, is, is very valuable. It sets the tone, it gives context. Share the feedback model with those around you. So everyone's on the same page and able to um, use the same tools. And then we're kind of in it together. And here's some advice that, that was shared, and that is to accelerate a feedback culture, focus on asking for feedback versus focusing on giving feedback. And, and this makes sense because you can imagine what would happen if you went back to your teams, to your work groups and said, hey, I want all of us to start giving each other more feedback. And you have a lot of people who are not good at giving feedback and not giving rece receiving feedback, giving and receiving feedback. It, it just... There's potential for it to not go well. But if you're able to go back and say, hey, first step is just to start asking each other for feedback. That is pretty low risk. Because again, they get to control what feedback they're asking for, who they're asking for it from. All that greatly reduces the risk and vulnerability. Um, it's helpful if you just acknowledge it might be weird at first. Like, hey, here's why I want to create this feedback culture, why it's important to me, here's the model, 
please go out there and start asking each other for feedback. And I know it's going to be strange because we haven't been doing this before. So just go with it. We, we know it's going to be odd and, and that's okay. And set expectations, encourage, reinforce, celebrate, and hold accountable. And, and I can tell you, so in human resources, uh, several years ago, we started switching over and trying to build more and more of this feedback culture. And along with just uh, several of the things that, that our leader did, uh, one was in our team meetings and our team huddles would say, hey, before next week, you all have the assignment of going out and getting feedback from one person on this team. Didn't dictate what it was about, didn't dictate who, but just you had to go out and practice. Just go get feedback. And then when we come back together, some folks are going to share, you know, what feedback you got and how that helped you. Um, or just what it was even like asking for feedback. And so, you know, that that set the tone and the expectation. And so it kept it from being weird because then you're essentially going to your coworkers, your teammates going, hey, you know what the boss said? Okay, well, I'm going to ask you for feedback, right? Yeah. Um, it made it much easier. And if you ever went to her um, with feedback about someone else on the team, a concern about someone else on the team, her first question would always be, have you given that person this feedback? And if the answer was yes, great. She would help help you and coach you and all that. If the answer was no, uh, that conversation was put on hold until you went and gave that person the feedback. Now, she was happy to role play with you, work through, think through how to best give that feedback, but there were no steps until you actually gave that person feedback. So she held the team accountable for giving and receiving that feedback. And uh, it takes time. It's not an instant thing. It doesn't just get better overnight, but over time, it does. It, it starts to shift. And uh, the more you do it, the easier it, it gets. As was mentioned earlier, though, building a feedback culture requires trust and empathy. Like feedback and trust go hand in hand. If you don't trust each other, you're probably not going to be good at giving and receiving feedback from each other. And it's kind of a chicken or egg thing. The more you trust, the easier it is to give and receive feedback. And the easier it is to give and receive feedback, the more you tend to trust that other person. And so they they go hand in hand. And, you know, it does require building solid relationships and assuming positive intent um, as best we can. And, you know, again, that's just a starting point, but it, it is a starting point. And, and so... Um, as we start to wrap up here, lo love this this quote that I found somewhere on the internet. I don't know who's it from or where it came from, but it fits well. And the, the flawed notion that progress happens in lease and bounds is an organizational curse. Real progress starts and ends with teams committed to taking one step at a time together. Love that. And I think that's so true, especially as we start thinking about giving and receiving feedback, right? We're just not all going to suddenly be good at it. It's going to be weird and awkward and we'll take each step together. I did want to share a couple of resources before we wrap up. One is the book by Douglas Stone and she Sheila Heen. Thanks for the feedback. By the way, this book has my favorite title. It's not only does it have a subtitle, it has an asterisk to the subtitle. Like, thanks for the feedback, the science and art of receiving feedback well, even when it's off base, unfair, poorly delivered, and frankly, you're not in the mood. And so a lot of the ideas from, from this course come from, from Sheila Heen. It, it, it's a good book worth checking out. And then, of course, is our Crucial Conversations class. I mentioned we're, we're trying to work on putting it together for, for the postdoc group. We do offer it separately just to anyone at Baylor. And, you know, that's available through, through the Learn module in Ignite. It is a, a two-day class, so it, it is a bit of a time commitment, but, but it is a very good class. There's some other learning resources we have available to everyone here, LinkedIn Learning, you have access, whether you know it or not, you have access. And they have like 16,000 courses, videos um, on just pretty much any topic you might need to, to learn something on. It's really great for just-in-time learning if you're just needing like a 5 to 15-minute video or short lesson on something. Lots of good information there and giving and receiving feedback. And right now, Media at Work, again, something that, that all faculty and staff have access to. Um, if you're not signed up, you can let me know and we'll make sure you get signed up. And they, they, if you're not familiar with Right Now Media, they build themselves as sort of the Netflix of faith-based learning. And so they've got a, a lot of resources, uh, not only from leadership and, and teams, 
to personal stuff, marriage, parenting, finances, mental health. And they, if you have kids, they have a lot of content for kids as well. So always well worth checking out. So, all right, before I give you the next steps, before we wrap up and I'll go do something else on this great Friday afternoon, chilly Friday afternoon, um, let me ask this and would love to hear from, from everyone either over the mic or in the chat, which ideas from that we've taken from today are you most excited about putting into use? And that can be putting into use with students, supervisors, coworkers, spouse, kids. I don't care that this works on across across the spectrum. All right, Caleb, being confident about asking for feedback. Okay. Yeah, we can just go out there and ask for it. It's we we don't do it often, and but there we 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 can. Yeah, I like the emphasis on uh, <clears throat> stating the behavior we observe and the impact, but then also sort of creating a vision for more effective future behavior moving forward. Yeah. Continuous seeking of feedback. Okay, great. Yeah, it's not like a one-time thing. Hey, I got some feedback. Great. I'm done. Don't have to do that anymore with my life, right? No. But, <laughs> you know, always doing it, going out there, keeping that cycle of feedback going. Yeah. What else? I'm, can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, I had to switch mics. Uh, so um, I'm excited about, similar to what has been said, asking for specific feedback, um, and making sure I'm in the mind space to receive that specific feedback in my asking, but also making sure that those I'm giving feedback to, since I have undergraduates in my lab, making sure they're ready to receive the feedback when I'm about to give it so asking first can i give you feedback on this specific thing at this moment or would you like to schedule a time to talk about it later yeah and and yes and and you got that piece in there great of they probably don't get the choice in receiving it but we will give them some choice on on when they're going to receive it and and so um that changes things it, it really does it helps them get in the right space what else who haven't we heard from? All right, and the crowd goes silent. All right, that's all right. We will. Um, so my next question for you here in terms of next steps, and, and you don't have to answer this one for, for me, but it is an important one I think to answer for you is kind of in this vein of what people have just said, what are you wanting feedback on? Who do you need to ask for it and by when? And so this is just for you, but I will encourage you to take a moment and just write that down. What are you needing feedback on? One thing, there may be a lot of things you're looking for feedback on, but what's one thing who are you going to ask and when are you committing to yourself to ask them? So I'll give me just a, a, a few seconds there to, to write that down for yourself. I say you don't have to share it or anything. All right, and that's what I have for you today. So, um, as we wrap up, any final any final thoughts or questions? And of course, you can always reach out to me separately. I'm happy to talk about this. I love to talk about this stuff. But while you've got me on the line here, on the video feed, um, what questions do you have before we wrap up? So, sort of getting back to my um, my initial concern that I wrote in the, in the chat is. 
how we reduce the impact of, of power dynamics to their minimal healthy limits to sort of break the barrier into this this feedback culture. Sort of another way is, you know, we want to ask diverse sources for feedback, but what if the people who have the most insight are also disincentivized by perceived power dynamics to give the feedback? Like the feedback culture seems like an antidote for that, but there's that kind of breaking the ice sort of setup. Yeah, so um, there probably isn't a right answer in all situations because we can't control everyone that they might be asking for feedback from. But to the extent if we're trying to get them to ask for feedback from us, say students uh, approaching you for feedback, uh, a lot of it is, I think, around normalizing the feedback. In fact, here, let me pull the... Stop sharing my screen so you can just... There. Um, I think around normalizing it, just being able to express, hey, I, I want this to be an environment where you're comfortable hearing from me for feedback because, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't give you feedback, but I also want to hear feedback from you on how I can do things better, how we can function better. And stating that not just once, but often, you know, it's a lot of times people don't hear the message the first time, or even if they hear it, they don't trust the message the first time or don't know how to approach it the first time. So being able to just establish with all of them that, hey, you, you, you do actually want their feedback and you recognize that it may be weird and tough to get feedback, especially if people aren't used to it or, you know, it's approaching someone who, who's at a higher level. Um, providing them, like I say, the resources, kind of kind of the model, of how to how to approach it. And in, and then also encouraging. I mean, just letting them know that, you know, it was hard for them to give you feedback. And, you know, acknowledging and complimenting them for that and, and, you know, even following up with them later, like, what did you do with that feedback? Because that's more the discouraging thing, I think, for a lot of people. They're okay giving that feedback the first time, but then if nothing gets done with it or they don't see what gets done with it, they think that, oh, it doesn't matter, you didn't care, you didn't like their opinion what it, whatever, but being able to follow up with them and just say, Hey, I appreciate that. Some feedback that we receive, we might not be able to do anything with like, yeah, it's a good idea, but we're balancing all these other factors. And so those other factors went out, but even being able to follow up with that, like, Hey, we took your idea into consideration. Here's what we balanced. Here's what we were considering. Here's where it ended up and here's why, but please keep bringing your great ideas to us. Even if we couldn't use this one, you know, we, we definitely want to hear them. Um, will it work immediately right now? Probably not. I mean, you know, we're, we're overcoming years of habits <laughs> and concerns and, and, uh, fears and all that, but, but as an overtime thing, keeping that message out there that you want to get feedback, complimenting on giving the feedback, even challenging them, give, forcing them to give the practice and forcing sounds horrible. I just mean, even putting out to them like, Hey, I would love all of you to give me just one piece of feedback this week on this specific topic, you know, what, whatever it is, you know, the, the class that we just did, the lesson, this thing, this project that we're working on, just come with one idea on what I could do to make it even better for next time. See, even then that phrasing is very disarming. What could I do to make it even better next time? That, that, that's pretty easy to come up with something. Um, at least it's less scary to come up with something that way. So Caleb, I just spoke for a really long time. So <laughs> is, is that helpful thoughts there? Other questions around that? Yeah, I think that's good. Um, it's, it's really a, a lot of it is just about reinforcing the fact yeah. that this culture is going to exist in your, in your workspace and allowing people to fall into it, helping people fall into it. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great way to think about it. Other thoughts, other questions before we wrap up here? I don't have a question, but thank you very much. It was nice listening and understanding that feedback is very essential for progressing and creating a healthy environment. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Uh, um, I'll be excited to hear how it works for everyone uh, as, you, as, you, as you go forward here and start putting some of these ideas into action.
other thoughts, other other questions? Oh, Denise, you're very welcome. And uh, well, with, with that, we'll, we'll leave it. Um, like I say, feel free to reach out to me if you do have questions. If you get into it and go, well, this didn't go like I thought it would. Um, if you, you know, practice something, just I say any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, Blake, really appreciate you bringing me in, having me on. Um, this is great to get to be involved with, with postdocs. Um, you know, I know all of you are really busy and don't often have time to jump into classes or aren't aware we even maybe don't even hear about them as, as they're out there in the world because you're focused on other things. And so uh, just excited to, to be here and, and be along that journey. So anyway, thank you all. Yeah, thank you as well, Brock. And thank you to all the postdocs who were able to make it. I appreciate you all being here. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be, we'll be in touch, Brock, probably about uh, maybe bringing you back into this space uh, again for some more, uh, some more training at some point. Uh, so we really Absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Sounds right. great. Great. Well, thank you all very much. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Stay warm out there and uh, try to stay off the slippery ice. <laughs>